All the heat, temperature doesn't change. Heat goes in, heat goes out. It's almost reversible. When you're at minus 10, it's irreversible. By calculating the state function, we find out that indeed, yes, it is consistent with the idea that when we have something spontaneous, the entropy always increases. section, I think it's around here, tend to be changed when it's heated from 300 to 1,000. So that's using just the, the logarithmic term. So that's example 3.2. And we did something like that. And then this, we haven't done entropy mixing yet. So this is the part with the ice. Two moles of water at 50 degrees are placed in a refrigerator. It's the opposite of what I did. I took hot and cold water and added them together. And this one is asking for an entropy change when you change, so when you put it in the fridge of the system. And this is the entropy change when one mole of ice is heated from 250 to 300. And it's another one of those examples where you have to work out the logarithm between them, making sure you use degree Kelvin. But this is the one I just did. One mole of super cold water at minus 10 and one atmosphere pressure turns into ice. Calculate the entropy change for the system and the surroundings and the net entropy change using the data given in the previous example. So that's what I just did. I did this example. And you can go through and you can see, well, I think at the end they get uh, 0.81, I got 0.82. But it's the same idea. You see, here's the amount of heat which is gained by the surroundings divided by 263. And you can compare the two. And it's an important example because it shows you how you calculate the entropy at different temperatures, how you calculate the enthalpy for a system. Well, we've done that before at a different temperature. And you combine the two. And it's consistent. So. These questions in the textbook are, are relevant. Now, at this point, we can look at some of the questions and say, what can we learn about Boltzmann's expression for the entropy? And I want to talk about this uh, for a few minutes. To go back and relate it so it makes physical sense. Because remember I said that whenever you have a system which expands or which couples or which gets bigger, or which gets more energy, or gets more heat, or get anything that happens spontaneously means that you get more available states. The system moves in to occupy those available states and floods into those states and swamps anything which is an ordered state. Like an ordered state would be to open the stopcock and have the gas stay on one side of the container. We don't see that happen. But it can happen. And there's a certain chance for that to happen, because the number of states available when you have two volumes added together with no restriction, they can flow through, they're going to move into that volume. So in this particular example here, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about what happens when you go from volume one to volume two. And we can do it reversibly, we can do it irreversibly. But I just want to see and relate now an expansion of a gas to the statistical entropy term. So let's expand the gas. Um, it's always an ideal gas. A into a vacuum to V2. And B um, reversibly to V2. 